Title shot, so be it. And what better guy than Rory McDonald, you know? Hey, real quick, I just want to say, Ariel, thank you for the questions. Yep, and I just want to say, I love Ireland. Thank you. <laughs> just uh, real quick for Dana. Dana, yesterday with our con out and then to sit there through like an hour's worth of media and then not have somebody ask you something. It's not for us to frustrate you at all. I'm, I, I've been in situations like that. Uh, it's kind of a dues paid. And once I have the title, and I think when I get on stage the next time I do one of these, I'll, I'll get asked plenty of questions. Right now, just to have my presence there, I think is a statement. There was 18 of us, maybe. I mean, there's 600 some employees in the UFC, and here I am separating myself from the rest of the pack. Uh, getting to be my first main event. You know, so those things right there are the important things. Getting a chance to go and perform on a, on a stage as a main event. Uh, I think getting asked questions will come in time when time's right. Uh, the junior fight right now, I just, I, I think with, you got Cormie and Jones up there. I mean, that was spruce. A lot of people want to ask questions. That's going to be a major fight. So uh, it is understandable. And it was not a waste of time. I've been here. I've been, I've been with media since I got here Thursday. I've been doing interviews with every, all sorts of people. I got to go to the EA Games release last night. That was super fun. Had a lot of fun out there. Got to do a lot of interviews there. And anytime I have an opportunity to come be with the fans, you know, I, I've been saying this for, for a long time. I fight for the fans, and you know anyone can say that. But when I come here and I sign every, every autograph that I can and take every picture with a smile on my face, that's actions that speak louder than words. So that's, uh, I have a good time. Who would you rather face, Verdum or Stipe, and why? It doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't. Um, I, I, I have more relationship with Stipe. Uh, I'd say we're more friends. Uh, like if him and I, like I could easily see us been training partners. We'll, we'll be friends after, this, after we're both done with the sport. But it's competition, and we're always about challenging each other. As far as which one, I just want the winner. You know, I'm gonna, I'm, I plan on winning my fight, and I, I, I see myself fighting the winner of their fight. Uh, I could see that fight happening in the fall. Anything can happen. We all know that. That's how the sport is. But I've been pretty good at predicting things lately, and I could, through common sense, I could see this working out that way. How about Junior as an opponent? What do you make of him and his style and his – Recent struggles in the octagon. You know what? His past is his past as far as uh, where he's at. Uh, if anything, it just makes me train harder because he's got his back against the wall. And when you got, got a guy in a situation, I've been in the same situation. You know, you got something to prove. You got you got kind of that that extra pressure on your shoulders. So he's going to come out and try to perform. His fighting style is uh, entertaining. I always like watching Junior fight, and it's a good fighting style to fight against because I know we're going to give Croatia a great show. Uh, Junior doesn't back down from anybody, so I respect him as well. Uh, a lot of the opponents uh, that were offered to him just didn't want to fight him. Now that it came out, I was being told it was injury. Now the fact is that they're getting booked for fights after the fact or they're calling out for Roy Nelson when they easily could have fought Junior DeSantos. So it just shows a lot of these guys are cowards and they pick and choose. Uh, Junior is not. He's a warrior, and, and, and him and I have proven we'll fight anybody, and that's why uh, I'm excited for our fight. I know it's going to be a great show, I and mean, we're going to go over uh, into Europe. We're going to help build the, the UFC presence there, and I'm excited for it. And for the fight, as far as him, it's, it's just look at the guy's accomplishments. He has a whole country behind him. He's got, you know, all South America believes that he can win, and they, 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 they're they they're behind him. So that's what's going to make this such a great fight. And uh, the guy's done a lot, and the three guys that are ranked in front of me, he's beat them all. So that's why this fight means a lot to me. Uh, this fight means more to me personally than anything. Uh, I told everyone after my last fight that, you know, I have a, my, my, my number one priority is uh, taking out these top guys. So UFC said, oh, yeah, and they called up and said, you know, you, you want to back that up? And I said, absolutely. So five weeks, main event. Did you ever think in your career you'd be fighting in Croatia? Nope, I never thought about it. Never thought I'd went to Ireland. Never thought I'd fought in South America. Never thought I was going to fight in Japan and all these things have happened. Now I'm just... But the sport has made me very open-minded. Uh, anything's possible. Anything can happen, and it continues to do that. That's how the sport works. So I just do my very best to prepare for anything. Uh, fighting the United States, yeah, it's a little bit easier for me. But an opportunity to go to Croatia, it's good because juniors having to travel there too. I'm traveling there too, so I feel like it's a neutral ground, and uh, it's a, it's a, the atmosphere is going to be awesome. I got to go spend some time there. The Croatian fans are amazing. And uh, just Europe, Europe in general is just a huge fan base that we're just starting to tap into. And I'm excited to be a part of, of, of this growth. Ben, you've had a couple of amazing, amazing submissions recently. 
how much of that do you attribute to new skills in grappling and how much do you attribute to just pure strength in grappling? So I'll just I'll just let you guys know what the go-go choke a little bit. Uh, some people don't know anything about the choke, obviously. It's, it's, it's newer. Uh, my submission skills, you know, this is 16 years in the making. It took me 10 years of great developing a foundation and six years of the military camp, my five years prior to that. I've been developing myself to, to even understand what Luis is trying to teach me. It took 10 years. Then once he started showing me, it took another five years of working all this stuff to, to the point where I'm bringing it in the cage and using it effectively. Uh, we have a full arsenal. We're ready to fight off the back, a fight on top. You know, and it's just that's what makes me so confident and strong. So I know I can win the fight anywhere the fight goes. But the go-go choke, I'll explain. Luis is 130 pounds. He submits guys bigger than me, guys his own size, everyone. Our rule of jiu-jitsu is if it doesn't work against anyone, it's no good. We don't use it. So the choke has nothing to do with strength. It's it's all technique, and that's why it's so powerful. Does that mean there's some other tricks you have up your sleeve that you haven't showed us yet that you've been learning over the years? It's like, that's an understatement. To ask me if there's any more tricks. There's a list. I couldn't even, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how many different submissions I can apply to win a fight. So I'm extremely dangerous, and I have no problem if we're doing lots, I'll lay down on my back, he can hop on my guard. I'm very confident I'll submit him. And, uh, you know, just uh, that fight happens, remember me saying this. Is there any more pressure to get the finish in this fight with the fact that, like you said, the title shot could be, you know, on the line? Or do you think regardless, even if you get a decision, you'll still get a title shot? That's something that I don't have to put much thought into because my record speaks for it. I have 33 finishes out of 36 wins. I don't think about finishes. They happen. Are you worried about the winner of Overeem and our loss lead might leapfrog to you guys? Had I not taken a fight and, and Overeem was going to fight uh, Andre Lasky, yeah, if I just sat, placed it, and was waiting, then things could have changed. The fact that I took this fight, I'm staying active. I think I'm going to stay a step ahead of Overeem. Long as Overeem can keep winning, he doesn't get knocked out by, by uh, Orlowski. Um, he keeps winning, and I gonna perform like I say and I'm going to get the title I could see Overeem being my first title defense. Do you think it's a little weird at all that uh, you're fighting a guy in Junior Dos Santos who's coming off a loss Overeem's fighting a guy in Arlovsky who's coming off a loss do you think that maybe they should have gone with the rematch with you and Overeem? Yeah there was talk of it. it looks like when you look at it on paper Junior and Orlovsky probably should have fought both coming off a loss me and Overeem should have rematched we're both on a win streak that's the sport though it makes no sense <laughs> and the way I look at it is all four of us are top guys. You know, winner coming off a win or a loss, it, it doesn't matter. We all have the credentials to back our names, and the the fights are meaningful. You know, that's the way it is. You know, there's one guy that's lurking around there. That's Cain Velasquez. It seems like that's a fight that you definitely would want to have back. If, if the opportunity presented itself, the stranger things have happened with the champion getting hurt or something like that, would you want to take that fight before a title shot? I'm not sure. Like I said, I think this fight's going to set me up for my title shot. But, you know, if the champ gets injured and doesn't want to fight and then Kane comes back and this fight needs to happen, fine. I, I would I would like to um, get the title and, and begin just all these fights. I'd like to have them as title defenses. Whatever it takes, though, to get to the title. And if, if Kane is, if that pops up, fine. But he's kind of an afterthought right now because the guy keeps pulling out of so many fights. And not just fights, title fights. You know, if we look at, we look at pulling out of a fight as a fight, his last three fights is he's pulled out, he lost, and he pulled out. That's that's his last three fights. So at least Junior steps in and fights. That's why I'm fighting you. Junior shows up to fight. Junior's had some injuries, but he doesn't ever accept a fight while he's injured. When he once he accepts a fight, Junior shows up, and it's something I respect because it means a lot to us. We train so hard, and we go through our training camps. We need an opponent to show up and be you know we're professionals. Show up, and these guys that are uh, you know getting injured two weeks out from the fight, you know, what is going on with a lot of these guys? Now, I've got my own thoughts on the whole thing, but it's it's not something I really want to bring up because it's it's kind of negative to the whole sport. And I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. And uh, let's just say the sport has changed a lot since last July. You know, I am on the up and a lot of these guys are on the down. Thanks, Ben. Appreciate it. No problem, guys. He's right here.